Several days ago, Army Private Bradley Manning pleaded guilty to 10 of the charges against him for releasing hundreds of thousands of classified documents to the website WikiLeaks. Since his arrest in 2010, Manning has been both lauded as a freedom fighter and labeled as a traitor. Denver Nix has been following the Oklahoma Natives case and subsequent imprisonment. Nix is author of Private Bradley Manning. I spoke with him about the Crescent Native and where Manning's trial now stands. Bradley Manning pleaded to 10 of the 22 counts against him. What did he plead guilty to? Uh, Brad Manning pled guilty to a series of lower charges indicating that he did in fact leak the documents, that he committed the acts he is accused of having committed. Um, he declined to plead guilty to more serious charges, including violations of the Espionage Act and aiding the enemy, which under the military justice system is uh, what they call treason. Denver, what does that tell us about his possible defense? Well, um, his defense will primarily, I think, center on the, the fact of motive, uh, showing that he leaked documents with the intent of uh, showing the American people wrongdoing, um, of portraying what had been happening in closed doors to the greater American public. Uh, he, will, he will defend himself against the most serious charge, for instance, of aiding the enemy uh, by trying, at least, to prove that he didn't leak documents with the intent of aiding the enemy, um, and that, in fact, by giving state secrets to a journalist, um, he wasn't committing something so serious as treason. In terms of sheer volume, how much material did he send to WikiLeaks? He's responsible for sending about three-quarters of a million documents to WikiLeaks. It's the biggest leak of military secrets in American history and very possibly the, the biggest leak of military secrets in the history of the world. How did he obtain all of that information? Over a period of uh, several months. He was working in a what's called a SCIF, a secure compartmented information facility at a forward operating base near Baghdad. Um, as a military intelligence analyst in the SCIF, he had access to computers linked up to um, the, the, the military sort of private internet, you might say. On that network, he was able to uh, access things like significant activity reports. These are reports produced after a military, patrol, military group goes out on patrol. Um, comes back and says, you know, they engaged with the enemy, this many people were shot, this many people died, etc. Also, State Department cables. Um, by virtue of a program the State Department had impl implemented several years before called Net-Centric Diplomacy, he had this sort of unprecedented access to uh, cables, emails, essentially, between diplomats in the State Department, classified communications. Um, through those, that, the, the, those networks that he had access to, uh, in his workspace in Iraq, he downloaded um, various files and reports, put them on generally CDs, moved them to his personal computer, and uh, then through various means, um, both in the United States and in Baghdad and in Iraq, um, uploaded them to the WikiLeaks website. Denver, he has said that he does not think, did not think at the time, that releasing that information to WikiLeaks would harm the United States. What does he base that opinion on? That's right. Um, he he and continues to believe that. Um, he bases that opinion on, or based that opinion at the time, certainly, on what he read in the documents. Um, the SIGAX, for, for instance, the significant activity reports I mentioned earlier, um, he had been reading those uh, and sort of thinking about um, what it would mean for those to be public for many, many months before he leaked them. Um, he considered those documents to be basically of historical interest, uh, that their release would uh, constitute a, an unprecedented record of what the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, of, of how those wars had gone, but that they would not endanger troops in the field because they were sort of after the fact. Um, reports of, of events that had already happened. Uh, they didn't include plan, upcoming plans for raids, for instance. He grew up in Crescent. The portrayals of Bradley Manning, have they been accurate? Uh, the portrayals of Bradley Manning shortly after his arrest were grossly inaccurate um, for 
a number of reasons. He was portrayed, um, I think, as, uh, uh, for lack of a better descriptor, of uh, an embattled homosexual who was bullied into madness and who hated the army, uh, leaked documents to hurt the military in the United States. There's never been any evidence that that um, was his motivation or that any of that was um, an accurate portrayal of who Bradley Manning was and is. Um, over time, I think the portrayal of him has, um, has gotten better as people have taken the time to, uh, to go to Crescent, to talk to his family, to talk to people who knew him there, uh, people who knew him when he lived in Wales, and uh, friends of his from his uh, adult life. Short Denver, as it has we're going been. to have to end it right there, but thank you for that information about Bradley Manning. We'll talk again as we get closer to the trial in June.